new widget tab. So what we have here today is a uh, it's a new battery charge mod from Funny Playing. Uh, it it's for Game Boy Color. It's pretty similar in function to that uh, Giltessa mod that I did a little while back in this Game Boy. God, I don't actually know how long it's been. Um, but there are enough little differences that I think it's worth reviewing. Uh, if you recall, I'll, I'll link it down in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. But if you recall correctly, um, if I recall correctly, the uh, Giltessa mod mounted right about in the middle. Uh, it has a USB-C port built in for charging, and then it just plugs into the battery there. Uh, at the time I did this mod, uh, it was not stocked with batteries, or it was, but they didn't have a connector or something. I don't recall. I remember having to source my own battery. I don't know if that's changed, uh, and my understanding is Giltess is working on a new version of this mod anyway, but it doesn't matter too much. Uh, the key difference, the key distinction is um, the shells at the time did not support these kinds of batteries, so I had to do some pretty significant modifications to get this thing to go together. This should be a completely different story because we have here a Game Boy Color built in a funny playing shell with a funny playing mod. Uh, things should go together a little bit more smoothly. So for context, let me grab two Game Boys here. Uh, this is also an aftermarket shell, but this one is modeled after the OEM design. So if I pull that apart and pop the batteries out, on the OEM style one, you can see there's this little divider in there. Of course, I picked one of the best shell colors to show this off, didn't I? Uh, but you can see that little divider in there that helps keep the AA batteries in place if you were to like drop this thing or jostle it about or, or whatever. So, so have you. Um, trying to grab a battery so I can show you. There's one right here. Brand new funny playing 2000 milliamp hours um anyway that doesn't fit in there not even close never gonna fit not without cutting out a significant amount of plastic and uh funny playing on the other hand they designed their shells from the get-go without that battery ridge so that this should drop in to that socket uh it's not going to drop in yet because we still have to remove the battery terminals but We'll get there. We'll get there in just a moment. Uh, one of the downsides to this design is if you want to use AA batteries, they can jostle around a bit. Uh, in my experience, however, I have never once, like they don't, as long as you have both batteries in there, they don't really move around enough to cause problems. And if they do, the problems are usually the battery terminals themselves and not the batteries moving. Like this battery terminal is pretty bent. The spring on it has seen better days, but as long as I'm cognizant of that downside when I'm inserting batteries, it's never been a problem. Theoretically, dropping it would uh, cause those batteries to slip out, but I don't know about you guys, but I certainly try not to drop my Game Boys, uh, at least not on any surface but this one. Uh, but anyway, Let's take a look at this new mod here. So this is how it came packaged to me. I had the battery in this plastic wrap and this plastic case. Don't know exactly what I'm gonna use this case for, but I'll save it for something. Uh, I do have another set of these that I will do some capacity testing on eventually. Definitely not by the time the video goes up, but hopefully, hopefully within a few weeks. Um, but. I know me, so committing to something like that is probably foolish. Um, eventually, we'll see, try and see how accurate that 2000 milliamp hour label is. Though I will say this battery is, it's certainly thick enough for that sort of rating. It is 11 millimeters by 48 millimeters by uh, we'll call it 29, probably even 30 actually. 
Uh, where is the battery I used for the Giltessa mod? Quite a bit thinner at 10 millimeters. I already forgot the length, but this one is 46. Right there. Well, oops, probably 48. 10, 30, 48. Uh, but this one, this battery, even though it is smaller and thinner, I still tested at the time. It's been a few years, so it's probably gone down. But over 1600 milliamp hours, so a battery that is so much thicker probably has the capacity that it says it does. Uh, but we'll, we'll find out eventually. Anyway. Almost six minutes in, I haven't even talked about the mod. Uh, ooh. I just, there was, there were two wires in there. Oh, there it is, okay. So the mod comes with this cable, two wires, this battery, and this board for modding on there. And before I start tearing stuff down and getting this assembled, let us take a uh, quick moment to talk about what this mod is and uh, what it is not. So like the uh, Giltessa mod that I did in this Game Boy a while back, this thing is based off of the TP TP4056 charge module. If I can get the angle and lighting right, you can see it right there, right across the top, 4056. Um, and it looks like it has basically no other circuitry other than the charge module. So this thing is literally just a charger. It does not regulate voltage of any kind. Um, it won't like put out any low battery warnings. Um, it does not have any load switching, so if you pop this into your Game Boy and your battery runs low and you plug it into charge, you have to turn your Game Boy off, otherwise you risk uh, damage to the lithium battery, which is a bad thing. Um, lithium batteries have a tendency to explode when they're damaged. Oh, I'm sure that's fine, that's weird. It's like there's something inside the battery poking out. All right, um, so yeah, this thing does not have load switching, which means your Game Boy must be powered off while charging. There cannot be any load on the battery. Otherwise, this charge module, uh, which detects the level of charge in the battery by reading the voltage of the battery, will not accurately be able to detect the level of charge and will not switch charge modes properly. Lithium ion batteries charge uh, constant current and then constant voltage or vice versa don't quote me on that um, and then it terminates the charge at whatever full battery voltage um, it's configured for which in this case I believe is 4.2 volts um, it's hard to tell without any actual labeling on this battery and I don't have a data sheet on it uh, I can check the uh, resistors in the data sheet and um, you know, look up the table and see exactly what it's charging at and uh, the maximum voltage. Actually, I don't even know if TP4056 can support lithium high voltage batteries, but besides the point, besides the point, um, this is just a battery charger. Don't want to mishandle it because it can be catastrophic if you do. Uh, so let's talk about uh, one more thing before moving on, uh, compared specifically to this older version of the Giltessa mod, which is also based off the TP4056, basically identical in every way except that they relocated the LEDs to uh, the power LED area, whereas Funny Playing left them on the back of the board, um, which is actually going to be inconvenient because this is not a clear shell. Oh well. Um, Giltessa has a charge port built in. This one does not. This mod uses the original DC jack along the bottom of the console, but 
since this is a TP4056, it's charging at five volts instead of three volts. If you have a uh, original power adapter, it's gonna be putting out three volts as it says right on the bottom of the shell, which it's kind of weird that Funny Playing didn't change that when they knew full well they were doing this at the time, but whatever. Um, if you have one of those OEM charge bricks, charge bricks, it's not a charger, it's just a power supply. Oh my goodness, how did that get tangled? Okay. It's gonna look something like this on the end. Um, jam it into the DC port and then you can power the Game Boy off that entirely. But there is one caveat. This is not an uh, OEM DC brick. This is actually one of uh, the Jelly Belly Customs ones that isn't labeled for some reason. I thought they were all labeled. Maybe it's only the Game Gear ones that are labeled. Um, this one puts out a regulated 3 volts and it supports much more current than the original DC adapter. If you take a look at your original DC adapter, and this is a USB-C PD brick, so it's totally different, but it has all the exact same regulatory markings. You can look at the output and you'll see three volts at probably, I think it's 300 milliamps, um, maybe less for the OEM ones. Some of the aftermarket ones are a little bit higher. This one, is like I said it's USB powered bricks so totally different voltages but the takeaway there been rambling sorry is that the milliamp hour that it support milliamp hour milliamps that it can output uh, is only you know 300 some odd megabyte met holy cow I cannot talk I am so sorry you guys um, it's only about 300 milliamps which in a modded Game Boy Color is too low. So if you try and plug one of those into your Game Boy Color and power it, it is not going to work and it could damage something. Uh, the Jelly Belly Customs ones, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it goes by Lab 15 Co. now. Um, apparently Jelly Belly got upset with, uh, Jelly Belly, the candy company, got upset with Jelly Belly Customs, the Game Boy modder, and uh, issued a cease and desist for that name. Um, they make their own custom cable that's powered off of USB and outputs a little bit more current. I believe these things can go up to 600 milliamps with no problem. But, let me grab the multimeter here. Let's put that into voltage mode. And you can see here exactly what this thing is putting out because I have it plugged in to a DC jack from a Game Boy. I can hold this thing. Alright. You see my meter is reading 3.1 volts, give or take. If I can get the probes on there. 3.1 volts. So, if we were to plug this in to a funny playing modded Game Boy Color, it won't charge. What we need to do is use the specific cable that Funny Playing makes, and it is labeled, so it should be pretty difficult to mix up. Plug that in. Plug that in. Oop. Measure it, and you can see this one's putting out five volts. So, in theory, the Funny Playing one should also power a unmodified Game Boy Color because I have heard, and we'll find out, hopefully it doesn't explode, uh, I have heard Game Boys are pretty tolerant to higher voltages. That may have been a, an exaggeration. Um, that's unfortunate. Is it a current thing? No idea. So, yeah. Now we have charger, DC adapter. Cannot mix and match them. And the Game Boy's not broken.
I didn't think so. But worth checking. Anyway, let's get on with the install. Enough rambling. Good lord. I'm sorry. I guess it's just one of those days, weeks, months, years. Anyway, let's go ahead and tear this thing apart. Now, this does not have to be installed in a funny playing Game Boy Color. It does not have to be installed in a Game Boy Color with backlight mods. You can install it in a perfectly stock Game Boy Color, and the only modification you will need to make aside from soldering this board in is that you will have to cut out the battery compartment to fit the battery. that aside for a bit. I am going to leave this in the shell while I'm soldering. I highly, highly recommend removing it from the shell while you're soldering. Uh, the reason being is this is not hot, as you can see, but um, reason is, let's say you're hitting one of these solder joints and you hit it from the side. Well, what's my iron touching? It's touching the solder joint, but it's also touching the plastic housing. I will melt the plastic housing if I do that. In this particular case, I think I'm going to risk it because I know what to look for. Um, and, ooh, that's, that's awkward. This thing is designed to go over. Oh, funny you dogs. I shouldn't have connected that yet. That is a very interesting design, de design decision. But, alright. Um, I guess you're supposed to just stack it on top of that inductor and then bridge that gap with some pretty big solder balls. I don't really like that, but alright. Uh, turn that on. Again, highly recommend removing it from the shell. Only reason I'm not is because this backlight kit is all wired in and I just don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, luckily the install should be pretty easy. Oh, you know what? No, it has to come out of the shell anyway because we got to remove this battery terminal at the very least. I'm sorry, I'm trying to make it easy, and all I'm doing is making it more difficult on myself. So we will leave that in there. This has the uh, LED backlight kit for the buttons installed. Um, you can see I installed that after the backlight kit itself, <laughs> otherwise I would have just used those solder points. But it is what it is. We need to remove the bottom battery terminal. Oh, you know what? Here. You can just attach that attach that, and there we go. I don't have to deal with any of the wiring. I am going to use my brand new laces. This thing. And my method for removing that battery terminal is going to be pliers, soldering iron. That's it. Get that nice and hot. 
Gonna add a little bit more solder to make sure the joint flows nice and easily. I'm gonna come here on the bottom, put my pliers, and walk that thing out. And if all goes well, it should come out nice and easily. That is not the one we needed to remove. <laughs> That's okay. I think it'll be cleaner if we remove both of them anyhow. And the reason I'm using pliers is not because I need to use force to get these out, but because as soon as I hit it with the soldering iron, it's metal, it gets hot, it conducts heat. I don't want to burn my fingers, so that's what we do. Okay, now that that's done, this is a totally optional step, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to clear the extra solder from these holes with my solder sucker by launching the plunger straight into my camera. Bring that up a bit. One of these days I'm going to crack that lens with this thing and it's, it's going to be a really horrible day. Again, this step is totally optional. I'm just doing it so that if I ever decide to undo this mod, reinstalling the battery terminals is real quick. Also, I think it looks cleaner. Ta-da! Love these things. I wish I had grabbed them or similar sooner. Alright, now we need to install this part. Actually gonna prep by adding a little bit extra solder here. Here, top one, bottom one, and this one. that lined up and nope. I just want one to tack it down and then I can probably do the rest easier. Ow. I got flux splashing me. That was very painful. Alright, there we go. I guess it kind of helps to stick the soldering iron like halfway down the hole. If you know what I mean. Alright. That is a horrible solder joint. Let's fix that. Can I feed in solder from the bottom? 
Oh, I can. That is no better. You know what might make this easier? Putting more header pins on, or bigger header pins. There we go. That is a much more solid joint. The other two. Got top one. Ooh, that bottom one is horrible though. Let's fix that. These are not the easiest joints to make. Now we need to remove F1. This is the DC jack fuse, I believe. There are two fuses on the Game Boy Color, or there should be. One for the DC jack, the other for battery input. Removing the fuse is as easy as flooding both sides of it with solder, and then you can just pluck it out. There we go. And now, we need to use the wires that it came with, or other wires, I suppose it doesn't matter that specifically. One on this side. Man, what is it with funny playing and using wires that are twice as long as they need to be? Outside goes to outside, so that goes there. I am going to make this shorter so that I can make my wiring just a little bit cleaner. Except that this is 32 gauge wire, which is kind of sketchy, but all right. I think it's just cutting the wire. Hmm, maybe don't strip these down or cut these down. Oh, there we go. Just melt the insulation. I'm sure that's perfectly healthy. Outside goes to outside. Inside goes to inside. So this outermost fuse pad goes to the out of this board. 
and I'm just running the wires because of who I am as a person. This is not necessary. And then the other one. Fix that nasty solder joint. Okay. goes to the in. I'm gonna trim this down too. Or, even better, just use this wire. But we're done. Let's try it out. See what happens. See if it explodes. So we've got power in. Shouldn't do anything because there's no battery connected. So I think we'll get just a flashing light or just a solid blue light. Plug that in. We still just get a solid blue light. All right. I mean, it boots, so all right. Sure. Let's go with it. Reassemble and test. All we had to do was take out the fuse. Bonus points. Uh, this one does have the uh, button LED module, and I do have it already soldered up for uh, battery detection, which is designed to work with this thing. So every time I booted this thing up prior, I was getting that uh, red warning because my batteries were too low. Well, yes, because two nickel metal hydride batteries in series is too low voltage compared to a um, lithium ion battery. Um, I'm having a hard time getting this lined up from the top. So a lot of people don't quite get this, but batteries have a, uh, a, a voltage curve. What that means is um, if you were to plot the battery voltage on a graph, um, your other axis could be either state of charge or, or like time, uh, such that the um, the lower charge you have left in your battery, the lower voltage will be. In the case of a lithium ion battery, one of these bad boys, the voltage range is usually about 3.2 volts fully depleted to 4.2 volts fully charged. And I, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna put this in the middle instead of where I had it last time. So even though the battery says 3.7 volts, that is what is called the nominal voltage. 
the nominal voltage is more or less the average voltage of the battery when nominal. Um, that is to say, don't rely on the nominal voltage to determine what type of battery it is. Uh, there are other types of lithium based batteries. Uh, tangent time. Like, for example, oh, we gotta pull that out. There are lithium manganese batteries, LMO batteries. Actually, before I talk into that, let's, let's discuss how I just got that out. So this battery terminal thing, whatever you want to call it, slots into the Game Boy shell just like that, and there is a spring tab holding it into place, so you can't just pull it out from the back. You have to pop it over, go in from the uh, inside, and then you can stick some short pointy object down into this cutout right here, push that tab down, and then the battery terminal should drop out. We need that removed. We also need Feed that through. We can drop that in. So other types of lithium batteries, they make a uh, lithium manganese oxide battery or LMO, which has a nominal voltage of 3.8 volts, but Despite the 3.8 volt nominal voltage, it still has the exact same minimum and maximum voltage as a uh, like standard lithium ion battery. So the max is 4.2 volts, the minimum is about 3.2, um, give or take. But the difference is the voltage curve, as it were, if we were again looking at a graph of the battery charge over time, uh, the voltage curve is a different shape for LMO batteries uh, because the voltage does not directly correlate with the percentage of capacity. So what that means is even though 3.7 is the midway point between uh, 3.2 and 4.2 volts, um, that does not mean a battery measuring 3.7 volts is at half charge, at least for LMO batteries. For lithium ion batteries like this one, yeah, that's actually relatively accurate, depending on uh, where and whatnot. Good lord, I am rambling a lot tonight. I'm so sorry, guys. A LMO battery has a nominal voltage of 3.8 volts uh, because even though it has max 4.2, minimum 3.2, give or take, um, that is about the halfway point for state of charge. There's actually quite a bit of room in here for more battery if Funny Playing wanted to. I think. Yeah, there's a lot of room in there. You can take a little bit of this bubble wrap and pad that, but I have full. Oop, that's a little too thick. There we go. Oh, after all that and it doesn't even work. All right, let's see if it's because the battery's depleted, even though I thought it booted before. Oh, I can't tell, who knows? All right, let's see why this doesn't work. Let's see what I did wrong. It's entirely possible that it just came out. And you saw how it would not boot with that, uh, that plugged in. Actually, here's something interesting. Plug that in and try and boot. And we can see exactly what kind of current this thing is drawing because I have it plugged into a meter. 
155 milliamps. So it looks like that is about what this thing can support. This thing being the uh, charge cable. Which probably means this thing takes like 10 hours to charge. Which also means those very, very thin gauge wires are also perfectly appropriate. Plug that, pop that out. And try it again. Interesting. So maybe it just came unseated or something. Notice I don't have uh, red buttons anymore. They are purple, like they're supposed to be. Oh, whew, that freaked me out. might make life easier to put a hole in this thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I will be right back. Something, something, make sure you take proper safety precautions if you're doing something like this. But I am going to put that right on the bottom. And drill this out from with an angle with no proper work holding is going to make this sketchy, so I am going to go set this in the vise. I'm not going to do it on camera, I'll be right back. Alright, that was much less sketchy in the vise. I just put a hole in the bottom of the battery compartment. Should still fit. Double A's just fine if I ever want to convert it back. You can't even see the hole from the top, or at least you shouldn't be able to, because there won't be light showing through. But, ta-da! Plenty big hole for the battery connector, and that should make feeding this thing in so much easier, because now, look at how much slack I have. I'm going to have to hold this thing at some weird angle. Oh goodness. All right, and before continuing to assemble this, we are going to check the battery voltage and see approximately how charged this battery is out of the box. Negative 3.9 volts means that I have my probes backwards, uh, but it also means that the battery is almost almost fully charged. It is slightly too charged to do the test that I wanted to do, which was um, I wanted to see exactly how much current this thing is configured to pull. And since the battery is at a such high state of charge, I believe we are in the uh, constant voltage territory of the TP4056 charge module. There should be more slack on that. There we go. Because we're at such a high voltage, um, the charge module, the TP4056, should switch over to constant voltage mode instead of constant cur current, which means it might not necessarily be pulling as much as it could. The data by itself isn't very useful, but we can extrapolate charge times with that. I'm going to set that just like that to pick up the slack. Boom. There we go. Ta-da! And then it's just going to work like normal. 
I can cycle through the uh, power modes on the backlight batter button backlight button LED mod. Good lord. Um, but it's already configured exactly how I would want it to be for this sort of setup. Uh, so in this particular case, if I have that wire attached, that one that was running up behind the power switch, uh, which I will link the video for this thing in the description if you want to check that out. Um, as long as that's attached, it will automatically enable uh, battery monitoring mode, which means when the battery is near depletion, my buttons will switch from purple to red. Uh, as you saw, every time I was booting it up before, I was getting the um, red buttons instead of uh, purple. And I could disable that by hitting select B and A, and that turns the battery monitoring mode off, but since, well, since I didn't have a warning already, now I won't get one. Uh, and the battery warning mode on these LED mods is on by default. So you can just power it off, power it back on to turn it back on, or just hit select A, B again, I believe. But there's no like confirmation, so power cycling is safest if you want to turn it back on. Um, I don't know. I dig it. I'm, I'm apprehensive. I don't like what is effectively a proprietary charge cable because now I have to keep two Game Boy Color cables on hand, one of them to charge this specific Game Boy. It's actually darn shame the buttons don't blink. That would be a neat addition when you're playing, um, if you can get that wired up. Um, oh, actually, no, I, I take it back. Because there's no load switching, we don't want to put an extra load on the battery. So we can't do blinky blinks. Uh, one thing I might do, just for me, because I do not have a transparent shell, I might relocate those LEDs and put them right underneath the start and select buttons so that at least I can see the progress, like the charge progress through the shell. Oh, that's interesting. It's pulling quite a bit more than I thought. It's actually pulling almost 600 milliamps, which makes me wonder if this TP4056 is even configured to charge at a lower rate. At this current rate, assuming the TP4056 is configured to pull only 700 milliamps. Guesstimation. A 2000 milliamp hour battery is probably gonna take about two hours to charge. Um, actually, no, probably even longer. Probably about three hours, give or take, because the uh, constant voltage stage of charge is not linear. Um, yeah. I mean, aside from the somewhat proprietary charge cable, which, again, it's mixed feelings. I mean, it's only five volts. It's easy enough. There's like, there's no, now that I think about it, there is no conversion electronics in this cable. It's just straight USB. Uh, so as long as you have it plugged into an adapter that supports USB-A, you should be good. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to plug into most of my power bricks these days, but... It is what it is. You can get adapters for that if you really need to. Um, so yeah, this, this cable should be pretty easy to make if we need to make one. You just grab one of the generic adapters or even a Jelly Belly adapter, cut the connector off, and then just wire it up to a USB cable. All of the conversion electronics in the Jelly Belly cable are in the USB side of the plug. That's why this plug is so long. If I were to pry this apart, which oh, I guess I might as well. Should see a small PCB in here and a linear regulator. Whereas the funny playing one is going to be literally just wires soldered to a cable. But that one won't come apart. Yeah, there you go. Linear regulator. Nothing complicated. But that's why the plug is so big. Actually, hang on. Is there anything interesting on the back? Aw, oh, no Easter eggs. I'm disappointed. I don't know if uh, Lab 15 designed these or just stocks them. Either way, 
neat product. I'll have it linked below if you want to use one. Very convenient for uh, troubleshooting random Game Boys, because uh, sometimes a bad DC jack will prevent the Game Boy from working off of batteries. Uh, even though there is literally only positive and negative on the jack side, on the plug side you might notice the jack has five terminals. Uh, two of them, these front two, are literally just for support so that it's harder to rip off the board. But these back three do actually do something. Uh, this back one is the positive rail. This one, I believe, is the negative rail. And then this one is a switch that detects whether the um, something's plugged in. When the DC jack is plugged in, this is disconnected. And what that means is it disconnects the batteries from the circuit. The switch itself inside this thing can go bad, and the Game Boy will essentially think that something is always plugged into it, even though that is not the case. Um, which means the Game Boy does work perfectly fine, you just put in batteries and it won't work, but if you test it over DC, it works fine. Uh, that's a good way to rule that out. Um, it's also pretty easy for, um, like when you're doing test builds and such, you can just plug that in without having to worry about getting batteries seated in the console, like if you have the back off or something. Pretty convenient for that, but for actual gameplay, I find batteries and portability to be king, so it is what it is. Anyway, I think I'm going to let that charge up now, uh, and then I'll drain it down and charge it up again and see what happens. I will put my notes in the description, but otherwise, you know, I, I've done these TP4056 mods before. Uh, there are caveats, yes, but as long as you're aware of those caveats, they are perfectly safe to use. Um, the, the thing is, Funny Playing did not implement any extra circuitry to hold your hand on it. You have to actively take care of it. You can't just plug it in and, and go to town, because like obviously I can turn it on while it's plugged in and it's still going to try and charge. But like I mentioned almost an hour ago in the beginning of this video here, the TP4056 module that this thing uses, I suppose it's actually over here, is um, it's reading the battery state of, uh, the battery's voltage to determine the state of charge. If there is a load on the battery, the voltage will always be lower. Any unloaded voltage, it, it's, higher than a loaded voltage. That's just how electronics work. Uh, so you'll notice if I were to unplug the battery and read the voltage, which I did earlier and I got 3.9 volts. If I were to turn the Game Boy on and then read the voltage, it'd sag a little, you know, maybe it'd still be 3.9, but it'd be a lower decimal. Uh, newer batteries are a lot better than older batteries. Older batteries have a lot more sag. Um, funny how that works. Uh, but, you know, maybe it dropped down to 3.8. Point is, this the TP4056 module determines that the battery is, char is completed charging when the voltage reads 4.2 or higher. Because there is a load on the battery, the voltage will literally never hit 4.2 volts, and it will continue to charge indefinitely uh, until you turn your Game Boy off and the voltage jumps up. That means you could potentially overcharge your battery, um, which lithium-ion batteries do not like that. They do not respond well. Don't do that. Uh, there are also several different modes of charge, uh, like when there are three different modes of charge for the TP4056. So when the battery is below the minimum voltage cutoff, which I don't know what it is for the TP4056, but I think it's about 2.2 volts offhand. If the battery is below that, it's going to trickle charge at an extremely low rate and try and revive the battery. If the battery ever goes above 2.2 volts, it'll switch to its normal charge mode and it's going to dump the full amount of current into the battery and hope for the best. Um, and then once it hits about 4 volts or so, it switches to constant voltage mode instead of constant current. Uh, and then it lets the battery finish charging on its own until the battery hits 4.2 volts, at which point it shuts off the charge entirely. But like I said, it won't be able to toggle through those modes properly if you have it on and drawing 
any power whatsoever from the battery. Uh, that is unlikely to be a problem with a new battery, but I am, I, I'm trying to speak to future generations here. You know, let's say today is April 27, 2022. This Game Boy, I, I have zero intention to sell. I will probably have it in my possession for great many years going forward. If I take a look at this thing this time two years from now, the battery's capacity will have depleted, it will have more sag, and it will be less tolerant to mistreatment. So yes, I could probably get away with doing stuff like this right now and have zero side effects, but if I do this same sort of stuff two years down the line, I could damage the battery and damage lithium ion batteries um, explode sometimes. Uh, so again, I, I'm not trying to say this is dangerous. I'm just saying, you know, keep in mind the limitations and keep in mind your battery safety. Lithium ion batteries are safe as long as proper care and handling techniques are observed. Charge and play is not proper care and handling. So anyway, that's all I got. I will throw some links in the description to this stuff if you want to check it out. I've got videos on this backlight kit. I've got videos on the uh, button LEDs and such. Um, though the specific video I link is probably going to be a different Game Boy Color because this one has a prototype ribbon in it that slightly different behavior. Uh, slightly. I don't remember what the specific difference is but um, there was something. I think this one doesn't support brightness control, whereas the production version of the ribbon does have brightness control, so you can change the brightness of the LEDs, uh, which was actually kind of a bummer because this thing's kind of dim, but it is what it is. Doesn't matter. Um, I'll link that stuff in the description. I'll also throw links to where you can buy this battery mod if you want to check it out. I will throw a link a description to the Giltessa video I did if you want to check that thing out. Oh, and um, on that note, Giltessa one uses a USB-C port for charging, which I like better, but obviously uh, the shell needs to be modified for that, and I am not so good at modifying shells. Uh, cutting a perfectly sized, perfectly positioned USB-C hole in the middle of a plastic shell is a lot more difficult than it looks. Um, I did a shockingly good job with this one, despite how horrible that looks. Uh, Game Boy Pockets are actually quite a bit easier because it's actually at the edge of the shell and you can use a jig and just file it down. But this one you have to drill out and then expand and... Anyway, um, point is, if you want to, you can install just like a USB-C port on this thing and just like jam it into the side of the shell somewhere or the bottom of the shell. Uh, you can actually take the portion of the USB-C port for the Game Boy Pocket version of the mod. Uh, eventually I'll finish it and throw it up on my GitHub or something. Uh, check the description. If it's not there, it's not done yet. I don't even have one that I can show off as an example. Oh yeah, I do. I found it. It's all the way on the bottom here. You can just get one of these. I made these PCBs um, very, very heavily inspired by Giltessa's own Game Boy Pocket version of the mod, but it's literally just a USB-C port that solders to the exact same footprint as the DC jack. So you can desolder the DC jack, solder this on, you'll notice it has those five pads on the bottom, those will line up with the uh, DC jack uh, holes on the PCB. Solder that to the PCB, solder a USB-C port on, and then solder your um, input to that big old pad right there, and then you can use USB Type-C instead of the proprietary, somewhat proprietary DC jack. Uh, but I don't know, if I ever release these things, it'll be there. They do work, but since it's designed for Game Boy Pocket, the uh, positioning is going to be kind of weird, so it'll go on top of the board instead of on the bottom, and you'll have to modify it. But Oh, that, I suppose that makes things kind of awkward because there's already a, uh, a hole for the DC jack. 
Maybe I'll mirror it and make a Game Boy Color version. There we go. I'm not going to release it without testing it though, so it's going to be a while. Uh, if you're looking at the description when this video goes up, it won't be there. Um, if you come back to it a few months later, maybe it will be. Probably not, but maybe. Anyway, <laughs> there's more things I'm committing myself to that I'm probably not going to get to right away. Anyway, that was a long video. That was... Good lord, I'm so sorry for keeping you guys for an hour for what should have been a 15 minute video. But, I had lots to ramble about. There are lots of precautions to observe with this mod. But, as long as you observe those precautions, it is perfectly safe to use. And I'm actually, uh, I'm pretty stoked to try it out. I'm looking forward to the expanded capacity, which this Game Boy might actually get better battery life because this screen mod uses less power than that one, but who knows. Uh, it'll be interesting to find out, I suppose. Um, I think that's all I got. Uh, description for links. Uh, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me one of these things to check out. Super neat mod. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited. I, I, I knew, th I've known this was coming for a long time. Uh, if only just because I knew exactly what that battery compartment meant. But um, I've actually got plans in the works for some other neat mods that rely on this specific mod for uh, implementation. So I'll share more details when that's when that's actually close to uh, being finished, or even actually finished, but anyway. That's all I got. Thanks for being awesome. I will uh, catch you all next time. Um, one more quick tangent. Eh, nah, I'll save it for next time. I'll catch you all next time. Have a good one.